So we're going to jump into the eight steps to buying a new car, and our step number one is research. So uh, when you're starting with a blank slate, what factors should you consider when buying a new car? Well, if you don't know where to start, you want to think of how you're going to be using this car. If you commute a lot, you probably want something more fuel efficient. If you're going to be towing things, you want to have perhaps something like a truck. And if you're going to be carrying a lot of kids or people in your car, your family, maybe you want to look at a minivan. So think of the needs of the car. And similarly, you want to make a list of your must-have features. Like I was talking to someone that wanted to get a Jeep Cherokee, and they wanted to have a V6 engine was a must-have feature. It had to have not keyless starts. They wanted to actually have a key to turn it in. They didn't like that technology. And uh, had to have uh, cloth seats. So you go to the dealership and you tell them these things and they'll help you point you in the right direction. Okay. Um, uh, step number two we're gonna go with is the car loan. And I've always been told that dealers offer the best financing rates. So why should I bother getting pre-approved? Well, there's three reasons you wanna get pre-approved. You know, the first one is obvious. You wanna make sure that you're getting the best interest rate that you can get. And if you get pre-approved, you already have something that's solid, that's in hand. So when you go to the dealership, it's not your first time uh, being introduced to an interest rate. Uh, the second reason you want to get pre-approved is so that you actually know what your buying power is. Uh, in the time that I spent on the car lot, I can't tell you how many people came in to buy forty, fifty thousand dollar cars, but unfortunately, they weren't approved for those. And so it was frustrating for the shopper when they couldn't get the car that they wanted. If they had gotten pre-approved before, they knew what their spending power was. It would have saved them some frustration, and they could have picked out the right kind of car. And you know, probably the most important reason is that when you're pre-approved, when you get pre-approved, you get a good idea of what your payments are going to be uh, in concert with your approval amount. So when you're at the dealership shopping for a car, you don't get wrapped up in talking about payments. You can actually talk about the price of the car, and that's really one of the key ways to save money when you're buying a car. And I have a question on that. Is it, is it, uh, does it affect your credit if you're getting pre-approved and going to the dealer and also getting approved? Does that, does that hurt at all? Well, you know, there's a lot of people who are concerned about having excessive uh, credit inquiries, and that's what happens when you have a lot of uh, uh, your credits run a bunch of different times at different places. Um, but the way it works with credit bureaus, for the most part, if you have your, car, your credit run at a car dealership or at an auto lender, Within two weeks, you can have seven or eight different runs, and it's only going to affect you once. So you're actually not going to get hurt by it. All right, moving on to step three in our eight steps to buying a new car is the trade-in. And how, how do I get a good benchmark on value uh, on my trade-in before I go to the dealership? So I have a couple of options for you. The first one is you can do this at your house or if you have the Edmunds app. And take a look at our used car appraisal tool. Uh, it says how much is your car worth on the website. And basically you want to find out what your car is worth. So you put in your car, the options on it, the mileage, and you want to be honest about the condition level. I know a lot of us tend to exaggerate that our cars are in perfect condition, but it's probably not going to be the top one. It's going to be the ones below it, the next two below it, which would be like clean or average condition. So make sure you accurately do those. And then take a look at the trade-in value. So that's one of them. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is if you have a place like a CarMax where you can get a, a quick uh, appraisal for your car within about an hour, that'll give you a price that's guaranteed. Um, and you can either think about it for about seven days. You could take it to a dealership. They could try to beat that offer. Or you could just sell the car to them, and then you don't even have to worry about the trade-in. Right. Okay, so we're moving on to step four, and that is the test drive. So uh, what should I be looking for when I'm test driving a new car? Well. If you're test driving a new car, if you've already had a car, you want to test drive that car the way that you drive your own car. Right. I mean, I see people go on test drives and they're timid and they're uncomfortable, and I can understand that because it's a new car. Right. But if you're driving the car at 15 miles per hour and you normally drive at 60 miles per hour, you're not going to get a good gauge of what the car can actually do. Mm -hmm. So you want to drive it the way that you would normally do it. You actually want to try to emulate your regular commute. Right. So you a lot of road rage. Get some road rage in there. Um, but if you actually, if you're, if you're going over hills, try to go over hills, mm -hmm. you know, um, park. Um, but one thing I really uh, want people to do that they don't seem to do very much is look at their visibility. You know, look at your sight lines. Get inside the car and actually look around. Is it, is it comfortable? Do you feel like you're in control of the car? Do you feel safe? Are you getting in and out easily? But think of it the way that you would think of your own car. If you do that, you're usually going to be successful. Uh, so I'll be throwing like uh, wrappers of like Wendy's in the back seat and everything. So that's like normally how if, I if treat that's my what car. you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? I like fast food. Um, all right, we're moving on to step five, which is pricing. And I feel like this is where people stress the most. So what is, a, what is the most stress-free way to get a great price on a new car? Uh, the most stress-free way to do it is to stay at home. 
and I'm not saying don't call the dealerships, but <laughs> don't, uh, go out in public. don't go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but you want to be able to get price quotes from the comfort of your own home. So whether you're texting, you're emailing, you're uh, submitting online quotes, the idea is to call three dealerships within your area and ask them for the car that you want, let them know what options you want on it, or if you saw it online, let them know what the stock number is. And you're going to be able to get three quotes right up front, and it'll give you an idea of what pricing looks like. And you can either take the lowest offer or kind of say, you know, that one is a little bit further away. Can you beat the price? I want to do business with you. You're a bit closer to me. Uh, one other option is here at Edmonds, we have a price promise where you can get like a guaranteed price right up front and you just submit your information. They give you a price and there's not all that back and forth. All right, moving on to step six, which is review the deal. And now that I've gotten the price on the car, is there anything else I can do to save even more money? Oh, absolutely. So one of my favorite trip, uh, tips and tricks is if you've already got your deal arranged, you already know you're going to buy a Honda Civic, you've already got the price, everything's laid out. Before you sign for it, you ask your salesperson, you ask your sales manager, hey, you know what I want. Is there anything else on this lot that can maybe save me some more money? Do you, do you have any other car that has a bigger rebate that I don't know about? Because what happens a lot of times is people focus in so much on the car that they're buying that they don't study up on other options within that same brand, and that could be a missed opportunity to save some money. Right, and because we were talking about this a couple weeks ago, which like the the Kia, like the was the K900, mm -hmm. which is a oh yeah, a that's like deal. a perfect example. Like mm -hmm. so, say somebody went to a Kia dealership and they wanted to get a um, Cadenza, for example, right? Uh, they may not have known that the that the K900 had a ten thousand dollar rebate on it because they were only looking at the Cadenza. So that's a very easy way to make sure you're getting. Um, you know, the best money that you can. Also, you know, ask questions. Ask about, make sure that you're getting all the available incentives, make sure that you're getting all the available rebates, and be sure to compare your interest rate to your pre-approval. You know, you do those things, you're gonna be okay. Okay, uh, moving on to step seven and the eight steps to buying a new car is sign the deal. And all right, so this is where the paperwork comes in. And I, I know people don't read, uh, for the most part, uh, and they don't read like the terms and conditions on anything. Like if you go online, you know, it's like, what do you do? Do you really read what's going on, on Facebook or whatever? So, what are the two or three thing, two or the three most impo important points to look at when signing for a new car? Yeah, I'm not going to advocate that anyone read the entire contract top to bottom, but you want to pay attention to the parts where you're going to be placing your initials. Right. Make sure you know what you're signing. Ask questions. When it comes to actually looking at the overall numbers in the contract, you want to pay attention to some big ones here, which is the sale price. Is it what you agreed on? Uh, the term, how long you're taking out this loan for? The trade-in, is it what you agreed upon for your trade-in price? Uh, interest rates and any added fees that you don't recognize. Uh, make sure to ask some questions there. And at the same time, you're going to be in the finance and insurance office. This is when they're going to offer you things like the extended warranty, the service contract. True coat. The true coat, things like that. And so this is your chance to negotiate on those, to find out what the price is, uh, and to either say yes or no to them. All right, and the final step is take delivery. And so I'm signed, I'm sealed, and I'm about to deliver. Uh, uh, but you simply don't just suggest I drive off the lot with this thing, right? No, and I think, you know, I hate to say this, but car shoppers make a lot of mistakes, you know, in, in the course of car shopping. But I think one of the biggest ones is not allowing for enough time for a proper delivery. And a delivery is, is the term that dealerships use when you get your car, when they hand you the keys, right? So I know, you know, you can't control necessarily the time that you buy the car, but I always recommend shoppers try to do their delivery during daylight hours. You want to take a look around the car, you want to walk around the car, you want to look for scratches, you want to look for dents and dings, um, and make sure the dealership's aware of it. Because if you come to the dealership, you know, two weeks later and there's a scratch on the car, they may not fix it if they were not aware of it uh, initially. So it's really important you look at it under the light. Um, if you don't have a, if you're not like really tech savvy, you might be buying a car that has Bluetooth or backup camera or, you know, adaptive lane assist. And these are all things that you may not be familiar with. Your delivery is when you learn how to use them. Uh, your salesperson should be teaching you how to use all the tech inside the car. Um, now, what I've seen, I've seen people have complaints about cars that they've bought. You know, they spent 30, 40 grand on a car and they think something doesn't work. The product works. They just don't know how to use it because they didn't get a proper delivery. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that you're getting the most of your money, you know, don't just rush out of there. Even if you're tired, spend some time. Make sure that you get a good proper delivery. And didn't we talk about this before with uh, with Ford or uh, with their uh, uh, oh their the, sink? Yeah, with their sink. The original one is like people just didn't know how to use it. Yeah, and so they were you know saying there was something that there were problems with the infotainment system, and maybe there were some problems, but the overall problem is people didn't know how to use the product, so they just assumed there was something wrong with the car. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so those are your eight steps to buying a new car. Um, if you have any questions about the process or you just want uh, some help reviewing the terms of your deal, uh, we're here for you. Uh, we have a free shopping advice service with a staff of uh, Edmonds car buying experts to help you out with your car shopping questions. You can just give us a call at 855-782-4711 or text us at ed411 or you can email us at help at edmunds.com or just leave your question in the comments section below. Um, our shopping advice uh, team will monitor the comment thread and answer any questions that you have.